Welcome to the Community Forum about privatisation. Today, around the country, some state governments are making changes to the public health system and privatisation, we can see it, has arrived by stealth in some parts of Australia. So I'm going to run through some of this and share with you some of the reasons why I believe that privatisation is something you should be so worried about in Australia. In the United States, and this is a figure that always troubles me, 1,978 people do just what my husband and I did. They go bankrupt every single day as a result of health crisis and or health debt. 1,978 a day. And there are things that the United States does well. Our healthcare system is not one. Privatization affects much more. It truly is life and death stuff in our communities. In the United States, 123 people die every single day simply because they don't have the private public coverage or cash or credit to pay for health care they need. You cannot let this slippage of privatization chip away at what you know is a wonderful thing, and that is your public health care system. <laughs> We have to ask, what is ahead in our community? The closing of Manly, changes at Monavale, and a new plan for the French Forest. What does that really mean? There will always be interests that will seek new ways to extract profit from our great public hospital system. And similarly, there will always be governments that see their proper role in health as providing only a welfare safety net they will seek to shift responsibility for health costs to the individual, always in the interests of trimming their bottom line. And we know that the O'Farrell government uh, has called for expressions of interest from private operators to design, build, operate and maintain the new Northern Beaches Hospital. They also announced last week that they are seeking expressions of interest for piloting a privatised mental health initiative in New South Wales. Peter Dutton is on the rec record saying that public hospital spending along with all federal government programs will be subject to scrutiny for new ways to cut spending. Here in New South Wales we remember all too well the disastrous financial consequences of the last hospital privatisation experiment at, at places like Port Macquarie where the Auditor General found that the taxpayer had virtually paid twice for the hospital and the state government had to resume control anyway. I am particularly passionate about access to quality public health being a right, not a privilege. And profit should never, ever, ever be made on ordinary people's vulnerabilities. For those who say, that there are not the resources to fund the burgeoning costs of health, I say they're not looking hard enough. When you, when you look at health, it's not a privilege, it's a right. Our forebears in this country fought very hard to get to where we are today and to have an international community try to suggest that privatisation is the way forward and profits come before people is just outrageous. It's about the dollar or it's about the patient and that's our choice to make. The challenge for all of us going forward is, is that we need to go and talk to the community. We need to let the community know that this is going ahead. We were very excited uh, a couple of months ago when we were told that there was about to be a big announcement about the hospital. We all gathered in uh, various hospital staff rooms and our executive director came to us and said, congratulations, at long last we're getting our, pro our new hospital. Yes, finally, we're getting our brand new level five hospital, public but there was a little clause on the bottom that said, this is going to be a private hospital. We look after some public patients, but this will be a private hospital. Privately run, privately built, privately maintained, and the staff will be working there as private nurses. I wonder what will happen. What do you think will happen to unprofitable patients? <laughs> it really worries me what, is, what happens ultimately. I don't think in the beginning, I think in the beginning it probably will look like a a bit just like a public hospital. But it's like Donna said, it's the chipping away. And when those services aren't as profitable as the private operators would like, that's when they go back and put the bite on the government and ultimately the taxpayer 
to say, well, actually, if you want us to provide this service, you're going to have to put more money into it. And then it, on it goes and on it goes. The long-term question is, what will be the future staffing of a privatised uh, hospital at Northern Beaches when it comes to private operators who absolutely refuse to bargain around those critical issues about safe patient care? The questions about the privatisation of health and the planning of health for the future is, according to the polling, one of the most serious concerns of we the people. So what you can do, it's not only about campaigning, it's to press those questions to people in power and those that claim to represent us and ask why haven't our voices been heard? Sadly, the only pressure that your political leaders will feel is real pressure to be thrown out if they don't do the will of the people. Never have we been asked whether it's going to be private or public. Never have we, there's, there's no where in the community that has been asked or consulted about how that will help the community hospital situation. I urge you to take a petition, <coughs> sign a petition, get involved in the community and the community discussion about it and urge the government to make sure that you're involved in the privatisation issue. Thank you, Thank you.